We know I'm joined tonight by my 10-year-old daughter. This has been an incredible you know, experience in, in government for her. One of the things about my background is that I have a lot of experience in working with government. And I know what it means to serve real people. I know what it means when a person calls in because they have a pothole or they need a speed bump in their neighborhoods. And I really want to serve you all. My daughter was born and raised in this district. The future of this district is very important to me. You know, I lived in Los Angeles, and I don't want to face Los Angeles traffic when I leave my home every day. I tell my daughter, we may never go to Whataburger again because it's under I-10. And you know, there's so much more we can do as a community, as a city, if we work together. We can build a strong community. We can build a livable community. We can have growth, and we can also have a property tax reduction. And you're going to hear a lot about this from me because I believe that when a community grows, when revenues grow exponentially, it's time the citizens get some return and get a little bit of relief. I really believe in this, and you'll hear more about it from me as we progress. I believe we can do a better job as a community. I work hard for you. I'm excited about San Antonio. I'm excited about our future. I want to work with the mayor. I want to work with this new staff. <coughs> I think it's absolutely great. I want to serve you. I listen to you. I believe that running for office is a public service. I believe in public service. I'm honored to be a part of a group of individuals who want to serve our community. I want to thank Art Hall and his lovely daughter for hosting this forum tonight. What's exciting about representational government is that we all get to choose and select who can be our next leader. And I'll tell you this. I'm a very hard worker, and I would fight for real neighborhoods. I've walked many blocks in this community, and we're a fantastic district, and I believe we can continue to grow and do great for San Antonio. I am one of you. My concerns are the same as yours. I have the time, the motivation, the dedication, the right attitude to be your representative. I will keep all lines of communication open. I will respond to your needs, your phone calls. I will make sure that staff would keep me informed of who's calling and what they're calling about. And I want your input, your ideas, your suggestions. I will keep an open door policy. I want to know what your concerns are. And I want to help you do what's best for your neighborhood because that's what I would want. I respectfully ask for your vote. My name is first on the ballot, and I have an easy name to remember, Gloria Sanchez. Thank you. Again, I want to thank Councilman R. Hall and Northside Stinson School and, uh, for putting on this event, having us here, and I am humbled to be a part of this group of candidates. Um, you know, I'm thinking about us sitting here, and tomorrow morning there's going to be a group of kids here tomorrow at lunchtime and, and all through the school day. And the kids are our future. I'm committed to making sure that we have a good quality of life for our kids. One of the most favorite things I like to do is put my daughter on my shoulder and then put her to bed at night. And I rock with her and I think about her future, not only her future, but the other kids and the families here in San Antonio. And I want to make sure that she has a good quality of life and she grows up in this community. I've worked for the taxpayers nearly 15 years. When you talk about folks calling in, I've been on the front line. I've been in all the council districts. I've worked on these issues, all the council issues. I've worked with council staff, worked with council members, worked with the mayor, former mayor before, not the current one, but I will be working with him. I will be working with the city manager, and I will be working with the city departments, and not only city departments, but the county, the state, and when you talk about our federal delegation, to make sure that San Antonio gets our fair share. A lot of other cities around the country are progressing and moving forward, and San Antonio is. We're growing as a city, but we're still far behind. And I want to make sure that we have a strong lobby effort. I want to make sure that our D.C. delegation is making sure that we get our fair share. I'm very humbled, again, to be a part of this group. You know, I'm going to strive each and every day to make sure that we have a prosperous economy here in San Antonio, a healthier community, and a vibrant civic life. I'm confident I can do it. I've done it many a times in my capacity as a staffer. I want to take it to the next level for you. I want government to come to you. I want to be a proactive council member. 
I don't want to sit back and wait for you to come to me. I want to be out in your neighborhoods each and every day if I can. I want to be accessible. I want to have an open door policy. And I want citizen input when it comes to large issues. And not only large issues, if I'm sitting down on that dice in that seat, it's not me, it's you. And I want to make sure I hear from you, the taxpayers, the citizens of our community. My daughter is two years old. She endured a long hospital stay back in 2005, six months straight, eight to nine surgeries, all because of a heart defect she was born with. Three months here in San Antonio, three months in Houston. During that time, we saw families anguish, kids perish, and it only enhanced my outlook on life, and that's giving back of yourself to others. And when you talk about running for office, when you talk about being a council member, it's not about how much money you have in your pocket, what you have in your portfolio, it's about how much you have in your heart. And I have a lot of it. I'll be there each and every day for you, and I thank you very much. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. I think it's a testament to the fact that you're interested in city government and interested in how the city progresses. San Antonio is at a crossroads. We have a large population growth, and the next person that you elect in the city office has to be capable and concerned about the direction that this city is going to go to. Uh, the candidates all talk about what they will do. I'll tell you what I have done, and that is serve in the capacity as your zoning commissioner for this district. And in that capacity, you have to meet with the neighborhoods. You have to go to neighborhood meetings, and sometimes those meetings, most of the time those meetings are at night. And you can talk to the neighborhood presidents about what I have done, not what I possibly will do. And I think that's the big difference between me and some of the other candidates, is that I talk about what I have done. My service as his only commissioner, my service on the Commission on Integrity and Trust lends well into becoming your next city council person. The other thing I would like to say relative to being a city council person is that you have to have um, a great deal of effort put into managing your time. And I think a lot of times busy people manage their time better simply because they have to. You have to be efficient with your time and I will be responsive to, to your needs as citizens. Something I mentioned at the last debate was that if you, if you call me, I have to call you back because in my office we keep, a, we keep a, a phone log. We have to as a position. And so there will be no way that I can tell you that I didn't hear from you as, as a constituent. And so I will tell you that and I will say also that my experience as a healthcare provider, my experience as a business owner lends well into serving you as a city council person I have the experience, and when you make this decision on May the 12th, that decision will echo for decades. Thank you. Well, again, thank you very much. I'm certainly glad that you allowed me to come up and talk to you tonight, even though I was a little bit late. You know, I think that everybody here knows what the problems are in San Antonio. You saw that with all the questions. What's the answer to the question? Da -da 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 -da. All down the line, everybody says, yes, that's a problem. So the real question is, what is the person up here that's going to give you the best solution? And I'm a little different than most of the other candidates. You can tell I'm not a senior citizen, okay? I'm one of the younger guys in the group. Well, what experience do I bring? I'm up at Notre Dame. I get all my management science and so forth. Come back to San Antonio with my wife, and it's a great place to live. I grew up in South Dakota, and I purposely moved to San Antonio because everyone knows this is a great place to live. How do we continue that in the future? Well, I was cut off on my train analogy a minute ago, but really, we're in the engineer's seat driving down to victory, and we really have to look at what's in our path that could obstruct our train and cause us to derail. And I think the major concern right now is our infrastructure as we've grown. Most other cities, if you go over to Houston, for example, up to the Woodlands, where they're growing up there quite a bit right now, they have it in place where they already know as this development starts to move out here, this fire station is going to be built and completed as half of our projected development comes online, and then the other half is finished with the fire station already in place. In San Antonio, we keep approving more and more developments, but where are the fire stations? We haven't had new, any new ones in a while. And so I think that we have to fix all these things right away. Everybody talks about these visionary 15, 20-year plans. You know, I work as a special projects accountant over at Valero Energy, and we deal with that all the time. We're talking about what is Valero going to do 10 years from now, 20 years. We even have a 50-year plan. We're kind of ambitious, okay? But we also have to make money today because our shareholders want profit today. As a city, you want your roads fixed today, you want police to show up at your house today, you don't want to know that there's a plan so someone will show up to your house five years from now. If you call 911, you want somebody to come right now. In San Antonio, that's only going to happen 70% of the time if you call 911, will an ambulance show up at your house during the first eight minutes of that emergency. Other cities that were compared to Los Angeles, LA, even Atlanta, some of the smaller cities, it's 90% of the time. These are things that have to be fixed right away. 
So as you go to the ballot box on May 12th, you have a lot of choices to think about. Really review everyone's background, what they've done, what you hear us saying we're going to do, and decide who is the person that can really take the problems that everyone agrees on and implement those solutions. And I promise you with my finance and accounting background, I'm going to be watching the numbers, and I pledge to you that 85 cents of every dollar coming in is going to go to these critical problems that we all agree upon, the other 15 percent for our future. And as we start to fix those problems, we can lower that percent, but right now we need that ratio.